Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Cornwell, Certified Nurse Midwife with Empowering Midwifery Education. This part of the course has to do with which type of birth center model is right for you. A legal disclaimer we put at the beginning of all of our presentations. This is for educational use only, not intended to substitute for professional, legal, or clinical advice. We try to keep our information as accurate and timely as possible, but make no promises and guarantees it works for your local unique situation. The course objectives, the students will be able to verbalize the difference between a freestanding birth center and a hospital-based birth center. They'll be able to verbalize the difference between an open model and a closed model freestanding birth center. The students will be able to verbalize the key factors that you need to think about when deciding which type of birth center is right for you. And then they'll be able to verbalize how do you determine which type of birth model fits your unique this topic is really, really important because I think too many people, few know much about birth centers plus all the different ways you can structure a birth center. So I always want to help um, midwives, birth advocates, business owners understand all the possibilities because some of them shut down on their vision of a birth center because they don't understand the the risk with, I don't want to employ midwives, I don't want to be a midwife, you don't have to be a midwife to own a birth center, you can don't have to employ midwives to be a birth center. There's a lot of different ways to do it, so why do you want to start one and how can we structure it so that it fits your goals short term and long term? There's a different sorts of business models depending if you want it affiliated with the hospital the hospital runs it you help to get the funding the structure or do you want to run your own business do you want to um, hire midwives and be their boss or do you just want to create a facility that the midwives can utilize so there's a lot of things to think about and pros and cons to each one so our whole point is we want to increase the access to birth centers across the country and allow families to have opportunity of physiological labor support um, models throughout the U.S. And there's different ways to set that up with these birth centers. So let's make no assumptions. A freestanding birth center means it's not part of the hospital. It's its own entity. It's not on a hospital campus. It's its own building. Um, it can be owned by a birth advocate, a midwife, a nurse, a doctor, um, anyone that wants to open a birth center. But it's a separate entity that does prenatal, delivery, birth, postpartum care. So it it's typically a healthcare facility, depending on what state you're regulated in. Some of the states, there are no regulations, so some people will set up birth houses um, versus birth center facilities. But the whole point is, is a home-like environment where you can allow midwifery model of care to occur. Um, there's different types of freestanding birth centers. The open model concept, it can be owned by midwives, investors, doctors, birth advocates. Anyone can own a birth center um, and then they charge to the clients the facility fee, they run the accreditation, they run the birth center itself, and then they work with the midwives in the area and give them privileges similar to what a hospital does for private practice physicians that would like to deliver their babies at the hospital the physicians will charge their professional care they will see them at their clinic and the hospital charges facility it's that same concept and a lot of investors are really intrigued by this model because they don't want to run midwives they don't want the risk of being the day-to-day -day boss of midwives but they would like to help out to get more birth centers because most midwives are too busy aren't business savvy don't have the funds the times the resources to open birth centers even though they would like to have one to deliver their clients at. Maybe it's an area where there's lots and lots of home birth midwives and an investor can open up a birth center facility that now their clients can deliver at home or at the birth center. A closed model birth center, and this is the more common one at this point across the country, is where the birth center itself and the midwife clinic are one business entity. The The birth center is the facility that they use and the the clinic, the midwife practice itself, owns the facility, employs the midwives, 
only allows people to deliver the birth center that they employ. That's the more common current model across the country for freestanding birth centers. Um, professional and facility fees are charged by the same entity. Yes, they're separate billing systems, but they're actually the statements, the charges are coming from the same entity. Um, can be nonprofit, can be for profit, depending on the business structure you want. Open model, midwives, are their own practice, their own business, do their own thing. They get privileges at the birth center. Closed model, the birth center hires the midwives, and those are the ones that are the only one allowed to deliver at the birth center. So hospital-based birth centers are not accredited birth centers typically. They're going to be free. Uh, they're going to be a different accreditation process with with CABC. They could be with JACO. Um, they're not. It's a different standard when you've got labor and delivery units versus you've got a birth center that the hospital has started. So most of the time, there's like a commingling of words with this um, lingo. But yeah, you can have hospital-based birth centers. It's it's on the hospital campus. It's in a unit at the hospital it's operated owned it's done by the hospital um, so it's very different most of the birth centers that are true birth centers across the country are freestanding birth centers um, Hospital-based birth centers, there are new trends with hospital-affiliated birth centers. That's a newer term. I know CABC is starting to delineate between the two as accreditation process, but for the references of the people taking this course and learning, most of them are going to be starting freestanding birth centers. So there's key concepts to consider when determining which type of birth center fits your goals and um, you're going to see what the volume's like in the area. If you're in a very quiet rural space, you're not going to need a lot of birth rooms. You're not going to need a lot of, because um, there's not going to be a lot of deliveries that are just going to happen. And especially look at the birth stats for the county, the community, that's the, the two-hour radius of you. Then you've got to calculate how many are low-risk healthy. That would be good candidates for the birth center. So obviously, if you're starting in a heavily populated area, you're going to have a better chance of getting busier, needing more space, needing more staff needing more um, of a bigger volume size birth center square footage than a smaller one. So you have to determine how many people are low risk, how many people will pay for the birth center cash, they have insurance coverage that will fit that that covered service. So you need to do a lot of your community analysis due diligence depending on where you're trying to think of starting the birth center. Some people are very specific. I want a birth center in my hometown. This is where I live. I'm not moving anywhere. I'm a midwife. Um, they're going to make it work there. But many times there's investors, there's birth advocates, there's people that can start birth centers anywhere in the country, anywhere in their state, and they're going to have to do some due diligence. They're going to have to look at the demographics, the family income, how many midwives are in that area, what's the competition like, if it's open model versus closed model. If you're closed model, you don't want much competition. You want to be more of a monopoly. But if you're doing an open model, you want lots and lots of home birth midwives that are begging for a birth center to deliver their families at. So it just depends on what type of business model you want, what your community analysis is going to look like. But as far as the female demographics, you're going to want to look at specific ages. Um, the data is very clear. People that tend to choose birth centers are a little more higher income, a little bit older, well-educated. Caucasian. So you're going to want to look at your demographics, 1834, um, typically a little more married, higher degree, higher income status. That's the current National Birth Center studies. We can definitely change that federally qualified health centers, nonprofits. You can serve the underserved. But when most people are starting freestanding birth centers, it's a business model. It's a structure. Um, there's profits you need to make. So depending on which type of structure you want to do. Payer mixes are really important to think about when you're doing a for-profit freestanding birth center. You want to make sure there's good payer mixes that have out-of-network benefits. Um, I don't encourage most midwives to be in network unless they can negotiate really great contracts because it's just the, the reimbursement is so low. It's hard to give good, high-quality care, low volume when you're trying to be in network and get paid minimal. So now you've got to increase your volume to make up for that lower cost. So most of the freestanding birth centers across the country that are for profit, smaller scale, are cash out of network um, to do it. So you just have to figure out what are the payers in the area, what are the families willing to pay. If there's other birth centers, what are they charging for their services? Um, 
this is definitely really important to look. The average reimbursement in 2011 from Medicaid was around $1,900 for a freestanding birth center versus the exact same facility in a hospital was almost double the price. So it tells you a lot of who can negotiate and the volume and the things that there's definitely disparities of freestanding birth centers and midwives do have to work harder to get fair reimbursement for our services, even though we're providing higher quality. So those are things to think about about when you're starting a birth center, you're negotiating contracts, you're determining which type of fee schedule your birth center will have. Every single state has different regulations. Some of the states have no regulations. Some have very restrictive regulations. You have to look at what are your goals? Who are you? There's some states only a doctor can start a birth center. There's only some states where you have to have a written agreement with a hospital, an OB, a pediatrician, a supervising physician over the midw midwives. You have to know, can I start, if I want to start an open model birth center, but the midwives can't even practice in that state, it makes it very difficult to start that practice. So you have to know the state regulations. You have to know what type of model you're looking for. And can you get that business structure to be successful based on that certificate of need, based on that community analysis, based on the average reimbursement? Will it fit your business model? Each person is going to have different goals. Some people want to be birth advocates, investors. They know nothing about day-to-day -day operations of midwife care. They've had midwives. They love midwives, but they don't know how to be the boss or run quality or be the day-to-day -day operation of a midwife practice. Open Model Birth Center may be great to help out the midwives in their area because they're a real estate investor and they know how to get good deals. Or you want a closed model birth center, you're a midwife, you know how to be a director of a practice and you want to be bosses. A lot of the midwives in the area don't want to run their own practices and you want to have the midwife and the facility all under one business umbrella and responsibility and training together, then you can do it that way. If you don't want to run the business itself and you want to help the hospital start a more natural, friendly, water birth hospital affiliated birth center, um, you can do that. You just have to determine how much um, risk you want of your funds going into it, how much of the day-to-day -day decision making you want to make, how responsible do you want to be? Do you want to be just responsible for the birth center or do you want to be responsible for everything the midwives do? Yes, at the birth center, you're going to have credentialing and basic standards. They have to have malpractice. They have to follow my admission criteria. They have to follow the policies, protocols that are set up within the birth center based on CABC's national indicators, but you're not being the boss of the midwives with an open model birth center versus the closed model. So it really makes a difference of your goals, your profitability, the size, the structure, where you want to be short term, long term with your practice will really determine which type of birth center makes the most sense for you. There's a lot of things to think about. You either start a hospital practice, you start a freestanding practice, you start a birth center that's open model, you start a birth center that's closed model, you start a federally qualified health center, you start a for-profit, you start a non-profit. What does your community need? What do you want to do? How much responsibility do you want for the day-to-day -day operation of the midwives on top of the birth center? Those are all the things you need to think about when determining which type of practice. So I think it's great for midwives and people that are actually in the day-to-day -day operations of birth work and deliveries to be doing more of a closed model, to be directly the ones um, that are running the day-to-day -day operations because they know midwives. They know the professional side. Um, but if you're more of an investor, a birth advocate, you, you love midwives, but you don't understand the day-to-day -day medical world and compliance and challenges, it may make more sense to do an open model birth center for you and helping out the midwives in the area. So you just really have to think about your risk, your structure, your responsibility, your knowledge base, what you want to directly be part of. So I'm going to reinforce the concept is with a closed model birth center, they are your staff. You are employing them. You're running their day-to-day -day operations. They um, deliver at the birth center. You don't even have to have privileges because no one else is delivering there but your own staff. And then an open model birth center, you have credentialing, you have 
privileges, you have a standard of care they have to meet, um, and you run the birth center, you have their equipment, you have their birth assistance, you have all the stuff ready so that the midwife private practices can choose to deliver their ladies at home or they can deliver them at the birth center. They have two financial agreements with the clients, one for the birth center, one for the midwife practice. They're two separate business entities and they have two separate completely different business structure and models. One can be in network, one can be out of network. Whether you do open model or closed model, those are two separate insurance contracting. So it doesn't matter so much what type of business model you set up. You get to choose if you want to be in network with professional side, in network network with facility side, those are different conversations from the birth business model. So just as an overall summary conclusion, I want you to understand there's lots and lots of business models out there. There's hospital affiliated birth centers, there's freestanding birth centers, there's open model, there's closed model, there's nonprofit, for profit, federally qualified health centers, um, there's community based um, birth centers that are owned by the community. So there's many ways to do it. Most of the birth centers across the country are freestanding birth centers, closed model businesses. I am trying to challenge so we can get more and more birth centers midwives are busy they're not strong business owners they want birth centers in their area but they don't have the funding the wherewithal to run the birth center so I would love to see more and more open model birth centers all over the country so that we get the best of both worlds we get midwife advocates opening the facility so that the midwives that are very tired and exhausted and running very busy home birth practices now have a location that's midwifery friendly to deliver their clients at.